there is this incredible array of things happening and if we can at least capture that it happened and keep it somewhere where people can refer to, we're helping create a people's history, right. which is the only way to counteract um, a meta-narrative that right. eliminates people. Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracy's The Populist Dialogues. I'm your host, David Delk. Today our guest is Amanda Eckerson. Uh, she is the co-founder of the B Media uh, Cooperative uh, Collective. Yeah. Right, okay, uh, which is here in Portland. And they are, they do video art uh, using documentary films, political remix videos, and skill building workshops to um, to act as a catalyst for cooperative work for social justice. That's that correct. correct. It's a oh, mouthful, right. isn't it? It is. <laughs> and we, are, we, we work as a cooperative and we are a collective. It's funny. We just, uh -huh. all of these co-words are okay. important. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Good. Well, so anyway, welcome to the show. Thank you for mm -hmm. having me. Good. So uh, t tell us just a little bit about uh, what a media collective is. What, what do you sure. Do? So there's four of us that primarily work with B Media, and we started a, two years ago or so, sort of picking up the the work of a bunch of different people in Portland who had tried to have open source sort of video teaching skills and had tried to do and had done um, media exchanges between Latin America and North America. Um, and we decided we wanted to do all of that. We wanted to have skill building workshops. We wanted to share films from different sort of social social justice movements around the world. And we wanted to make our own stuff. So the four of us kind of banded together and we make films and we teach people to do the same to empower them basically to be their own media makers. Okay. And we right. try to make it fun. All right. And, and wh why is it important for people to be their own media makers? Well, we're here on this show because theoretically we need to counteract <laughs> the mainstream media and do our own thing. And the mo we live in a very mediated society, so the more that people are able to work with the tools of the 21st century, the more able we will be to be citizens, mm -hmm. really, is what it comes down to. And and there's a whole lot you can learn um, through the process of making your own media. I mean, you, you have to research things. You have mm -hmm. to learn what other people are saying, particularly with remix videos, which is what we do a lot of. We, we take bits of the corporate media, we remessage them, and we put it back out there with our own message. Um, so there's research and there's there's connections that happen when you're making your own films. You're you're putting out there what your voice is, what you're seeing, and you're making connections that way. Right. So when people can see what's important to you, and that's how we that's how we met was it because is. I went to your uh, show where you had you had a class at Portland Community College. Yeah. Talk talk about the class. Sure. So, like I said, we sort of started this as a relatively volunteer project, but really wanted to teach official classes. So we met at the social justice film screening where oh, yeah, right. six, we had six or so students actually make films about an issue important to their community and it was a public screening of the films they'd made. And that was the first time B Media had attempted to have an official class, a six week course that we developed where we took people through the process of uh, media literacy, what it means to make your own films. Um, we taught them interview skills, they went out and interviewed people, we storyboarded the ideas, and then we actually made a film. It was a lot of work. It was almost too too much work mm -hmm. for six weeks. You should talk to some of the students <laughs> about that. <laughs> but it was an experiment in an attempt to have a, you know, a class that would teach the skills that we wanted people to have. And the films are fabulous. Mm -hmm. You probably show some of them at yes. some point, but. Yeah, actually, next week we will have uh, Sammy Aloy with the Oregon Working yeah. Families Party on, and the week after that we'll have Hector Suna mm -hmm. uh, with Opal, uh, Both Environmental of them made Justice. Both great films um, right. about issues that are so relevant to, I mean, they made films about student debt and they made films about um, day labor organizing. They made films about uh, TriMet bus riders whose, whose fares are going up. All the stories that we know in our everyday mm -hmm. lives as organizers and activists, but that rarely ha are quality stories sort of with told in, in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. We get very high-tech advertisements, but we don't mm -hmm. get mm -hmm. sexy-looking um, social justice films. So the, that's what the, the media Yeah, what, what I was really <laughs> impressed with all, all of those films that were done was that, number one, they were done in such a short period of time yeah. by people who had no skills to, at doing that. Totally. Right. Yeah, and that's the idea. And they were really very, very effective at conveying the messages that they needed exactly. to convey. 
which were non number one non-commercial messages. Absolutely, right. and that's what we want to do. B Media wants to be the go-to organization to do capacity trainings for unions, for social justice organizations, for nonprofits, because we try to capacitate and create concurrently. So we want we don't we didn't want to make the films about TriMet bus riders. Mm -hmm. We wanted Hector's an organizer with with the you know people organizing for lower bus fares. We wanted to teach people within the organization so that they had the long lasting skills, but also help them create something that was good. Mm -hmm. So right. okay, yeah. So we had uh, you had uh, one of the videos that you showed at the at the festival mm -hmm. uh, that we were talking about uh, was one that B Media itself had done. Sure, that's and, right. Uh, and I think we would like to go and show that now. Sure, we can do that. And so this is about the first year anniversary of Occupy Wall Street, and we went to New York and happened to collaborate with people there. But it's an example of sort of straight documentary work that we do, trying to show what's going on on the ground. All right, great. Greetings from occupied New York City. This is Truth to Power News, bringing you the beat from the street on this sunny September 17th. Today marked the one year anniversary of Occupy Wall Street, the original creative organizing action that gave birth to the Occupy movement, which has since spread like wildfire across our nation and the world. Since the movement's inception, the mainstream media has done its best to downplay the significance of this burgeoning populist resistance making a particular point this year to proclaim the movement dead in its tracks. To the contrary, what we witnessed today and into the night refuted all such claims and proved without doubt that this movement, the idea that is Occupy, is only gaining momentum and getting stronger with each passing moment. Beginning at 7 a.m., the actions revolved around the theme that all roads lead to Wall Street and were comprised of four separate blocks of affinity groups working towards the collective goal of disrupting business as usual. The blocks themselves were designated as the 99%, debt, eco, and education, and their locations separated Manhattan's financial district into four corresponding physical zones with targeted corporate locations, pre-planned and spontaneous actions, jovial mischief making, and heated confrontations. A central action to the day was the People's Wall, which was to serve as a mobile barrier of pedestrian traffic, circulating seemingly without reason in an attempt to protect those people in the middle who chose to sit in the streets and practice nonviolent civil disobedience. Several of the demonstrations reflected months of planning and included provisions for alternative plans of execution, should a sizable obstacle manifest itself in the moment. This actually happened several times throughout the morning, and we were so impressed by the ability of the groups and individuals present to assess the efficacy of their actions in the midst of the organized chaos, and to disperse and regroup if they found they were losing ground towards their goal. A perfect example was given by the Strike Debt Zone Affinity Group, whom we followed for the first part of the morning. As the People's Wall began to be kenneled by the New York Police Department in an increasingly aggressive manner, a herd-like mentality manifested within the crowds. While adrenaline set in, participants attempted to navigate the narrow, barricaded, maze-like streets and began to form as a march instead of an effective, fluid, and dispersed human shield. Texts were sent forth via the communications team off-site, encouraging affinity groups to disperse, reconvene, and refocus on the task at hand. Once regrouped at our point of origination, we watched the Strike Debt Affinity Group hold an impromptu meeting with a loose but effective consensus-based decision-making model. The plan was quickly agreed to and called for the group of hundreds to break into groups of 20 to 25 people, who would then target different locations as effectively as they could. We followed one such group as they went civilian, parting ways and dissolving into the commuter pedestrian crowd only to meet up five minutes later at the corporate headquarters of J.P. Morgan Chase, and upon making the call, rushed the revolving doors, slid past security, and reveled in the peaceful disruption of business within the bank. Several arrests were made, the first of 160 to come throughout the day, and included acclaimed NYU professor Andrew Ross and our own Truth to Power News videographer, Chops. As of the time of this recording, we are still unsure as the CHOPS' whereabouts and safety. After the morning of actions, a spokes council meeting was held in Battery Park, 
during which affinity groups and even some unaffiliated gave reports about their actions, their concerns, triumphs, and plans for the rest of the day. The meeting served to enthuse the distraught, rejuvenate the weary, and refocus the thousands of participants before the rest of the actions ensued. After sharing in a chant and cries of fervor, the groups dispersed again and headed towards their targets. Many more demonstrations occurred, and as our numbers grew, so did those of the police, who made their presence palpable, but failed to deter us from our goal. For a movement that is supposed to be dead, to be nothing of note or concern, there were droves of law enforcement out in the streets, on every corner and waiting in every alcove, begging the question of just what this city and governments across the nation are so afraid of. After trading hours closed, the Day of Resistance moved to Zuccotti Park, renamed Liberty Plaza, not only for its proximity to Liberty Street, but also due to its significance as the birthplace of the Occupy Wall Street movement, the mouthpiece for a rising generation of those that actively seek liberty in all realms of existence. After revelry with community and labor allies, a People's Forum was held, during which legal supporters gave rep reports on the status of our arrested allies, and avenues of networking and project building were shared and explored. For about a half hour, the thousands gathered at the park, grouped into circles of around 10 people each, comprised of those seated next to them, to engage in conversations about where the movement will go during its second year, to build upon one another's experiences throughout the day and throughout our lives. The scene was electric and inspiring and so incredibly fruitful. It reeked of life and stood as another testament to the lasting power of our collective idea. We gathered many amazing interviews throughout the day, including the Reverend Billy of the Church of Stop Shopping and gospel singer and longtime activist Michelle Schacht. While en route to jail support to see if there were any updates on Chops' status, we witnessed the forces of the NYPD amassing just blocks from Zuccotti, with school buses for future arrestees in tow, preparing for what we could only assume would be a brutal and unnecessary preemptive eviction. As the night wrapped up at the park though, birthday cakes were served and devoured by physically hungry yet spiritually satiated new friends. And even as the riot cops approached the scene, it was wonderfully clear that the Occupy movement isn't going anywhere. It's growing everywhere. And we look forward to what this next year of growth and movement hold in store. Wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing that yeah, with us. You're yeah, you're welcome. Why, why was it important to film this? So we provided some of the only coverage, like consistent coverage of everything that happened in the Occupy Wall Street anniversary. And it was done with a handy cam and a DSLR camera and basically three people. Um, and it was important because so often the mainstream news misconstructs what happens at events or actions, et cetera. And so to have a narrative from the people of what actually happened was really important. And particularly because in Portland, the Occupy Wall Street movement was quite large. The Occupy movement was large. To have presence on the East Coast with that and bring that back is something that we want to do when we document things. So that's part of our whole goal is to sort of cross pollinate these movements and make people realize how connected they are and so yeah because uh, otherwise without that kind of thing we all can feel very lice isolated in our own small communities absolutely right. and of course yeah. I think that's one of the functions of, of major media is to actually help us feel isolated that's entirely and correct right. and I mean the other piece that I brought which is shorter than that one so we do like as I mentioned documentaries and then remix videos I brought a one and a half minute piece where we just took the straight corporate news around the Occupy movement and remixed it to make you see how much vomit they tried to give to the Occupy movement. Okay. So why, we can why, watch that one why, too. Yeah, why don't we watch that, watch yeah. the remix. And we can talk, and then we can talk about okay. how we do what Great. we do. Okay. Might take a minute or so for him to pull it up. Okay. That's right. I yeah. Edit but, this out. but so remix <laughs> videos are essentially as I mentioned, they, they come from found footage and then you, you, you say your own message to them. It's actually quite an empowering thing to do and you use clips through the fair, fair use clause of, of law, uh -huh. which <laughs> of copyright law, which uh -huh. enables people for sort of education purposes and um, teaching purposes to, and free comment purposes to use found footage. So that's what 
This, okay. is, this right. is all of the vomit from the mainstream news <laughs> on what Occupy was. Okay, right, yeah, so we can yeah. have a, a, a clear contrast. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Let's see if there it comes. They are just openly embracing their demonic aspect. Capitalists, if you think that you can play yeah. footsies with these people, you're wrong. They will come for you and drag you into the streets and kill you. Let me, let me now take that and for a brief moment describe Occupy Wall Street. Pepper spray, pe 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 pepper spray. That just burns your eyes, right? We kept asking the simple question, why are you here? Why the failure, here? the failure of the Occupy Wall Street movement. <laughs> They're attacking anything and everything. Right. That's right. Thing. And pepper spray. There's this vacuum of leadership or ideology or anything that they're out there for. Pepper spray. Don't blame Wall Street. Don't blame the big banks. If you don't have a job and you're not rich, blame yourself. You None of these kids at Occupy Wall Street are coming from places like Yale. A feet, elite, university, fancy pants, pepper spray. They're angry about everything. There's this just visceral hatred of Fox yeah. News. They're, they're brainless. Don't. They're brainwashed. And these people are highly scripted. People the defecating, defecating on, on police, police cars. cars. And they know how to agitate. You can tell it is just on the edge of violence. These guys are worse than Robespierre. From the French Revolution. Revolution. The more blood there is, the more these people are sated. Hilarity and revulsion. Pe 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 pepper spray. It's a food product, essentially. It's difficult to escape noticing that the Occupy movement is officially backed by the American Nazi Party, the American Communist Party, the Workers' World Party, the Democratic Party, and the President. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> well, right? that is an interesting <laughs> collection of people <laughs> exactly. they put in their groups. And we don't realize the amount of a war really that's going on against mo our movements until you see it all together and so that's yeah. part of what we do is we try to make it entertaining informative mm -hmm. um, and and mix the two take mm -hmm. documentary shorts and remix videos and that's where we come up with what we call our variety show right. okay and so that was really a, a contrast between yeah. between that remix and what you did at, at Occupy yeah, Wall exactly. Street exactly yeah uh, much um, much better sense of what actually happened right? at, at yeah. the Occupy Wall Street one year anniversary than what was being told to the, to the general population. Absolutely, right. and that's what we're facing is we face sort of this consistent barrage of misinformation mm -hmm. and skewed information to serve corporate interests right. or whatever the interests are of the people. Right. So uh, not one of the, when I went to your YouTube Mm -hmm. uh, channel, a and I watched a video of um, of a uh, flash mob at Michael's. Talk, yeah, talk about that for a minute. The Michael's flash mob. We worked with SEIU on that. We are Oregon, I believe, SEIU, and they there was they were raising wages and cutting full time workers at Michael's, and so. The and, and, and the reason for that was because they had been bought by. By Bain Capital, owned by Mitt Romney, that's correct, or right. partnered, you know, mm -hmm. invested in by Mitt Romney. And so they used that as a, a galvanizing point, made a very funny video with lovely elder women dancing in the, in the yeah. aisles of Michael's. We've got a lot of fun ones like that. We've also, the BDS campaign did one at New Seasons, the Boycott, Divest, and Sanction did a flash mob at New Seasons. Um, we, we try to help out with different social movements. We film, we sort of stand in solidarity with them, and then help get the messages out. Mm -hmm, yeah. And so, like that flash mob, were you, did you have a hand in actually organizing that, or you were just there to record no, it? No, we were just the, the, we helped with the media assistance, uh -huh. basically. Right. But, you know, we're aware that they were doing some interesting things, right, yeah. okay, even though we yeah. didn't know exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, it was very entertaining. It's, yeah. it's like, yes. And I had no idea. Uh, right? No one yes, I had so no small were happening in Portland. Yeah, and uh, I've, I've heard of them elsewhere, but not in Portland. Yeah, and on some level, what B Media wants is to at least document, even if we're not, you know, you saw it a, few, a month later or so, but even though you weren't there, to make you realize there is this incredible array of things happening, and if we can at least capture that it happened and keep it somewhere where people can refer to, we're helping create a people's history, right. which is the only way to counteract um, a meta-narrative that right. eliminates people. Right. Yeah, and you brought one, th uh, a third video. Well, we're having our variety show. Mm -hmm. We have, our variety show is coming out now on November 15th. So what we do is we take a bunch of the documentary shorts, a bunch of the remix videos, and we merge them into a, a themed movie, essentially that is 
a variety of things, and usually there's a theme. So we actually have an Occupy Occupation Nation variety show, which includes some of those clips. And the one coming up is called Electile Dysfunction. So the variety show for Electile Dysfunction, which talks about all sorts of things, from corporate personhood to the cuts to the Postal Service to um, our crazy elections, will be online mm -hmm. immediately. And I've got the promo for that one. So okay. if we want right, to play that. All right, let's watch that. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling nervous, isolated, and anxious about the state of the state? Well, I can't, I can't back to it's Velveeta versus cheddar. Our Velveeta melts much better. It's both of you, you're both sick. You need death. Feeling the aches and pains of a dying planet? Clean coal technology. I, well, I, I can't, can't, I can't back to it. And by the way, I like coal. Yeah, I want to really emphasize this point. Overstimulation, not getting you up off your couch. Soy Mitt Romney. Y apruebo este mensaje. Do you just not get it? If you are experiencing any of these conditions, you may be suffering from erectile dysfunction. Don't worry, though. There is a solution. It's not... Diarrhea, nausea. It's Rise Up. Warning, side effects of Rise Up include resistance to state power, a sense of actual purpose in your life, critical thinking skills, oppositional defiance disorder, warm fuzzy feelings, bewildering empowerment, rejection of advertisements, and a temporary relief from corporate culture. So there you go. So okay. Rise Up is essentially our cure for electile dysfunction. So it's a whole bunch of um, empowering examples of community democracy juxtaposed with sort of the dysfunction of our system. It's quite entertaining. Okay. All right. And this program will unfortunately actually air after that event. No, but that's fine. The event is, but it's, it'll be out there in the internet so everyone can and, just watch okay. it. And it will be on your YouTube channel mm -hmm. and your Facebook page. That's and, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. BeMediaCollective.org. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you very much for being here. Yeah. I totally right. appreciated coming in. Yeah. I hope we can do more right. together. Yes, I'm sure we will. Cool. Okay. So, uh, more information on the B Media Co Collective uh, is available at www.bmediacollective.org or on YouTube on youtube.com search for B Media Collective or on their Facebook uh, page facebook.com slash B Media Collective. All right, so we do have something coming up uh, that people here in the Portland area uh, can be involved with, and we invite you to do this. Get on the bus, Portland. Get on the bus, Oregon. The bus on December 1st going to the Peach Peace Arch in Blaine, Washington. Join your brothers and sisters, labor leaders, trade justice and food sovereignty groups, farm family farmers, immigration reformers, public health advocates, environmentalists, students, and democracy advocates like the Alliance for Democracy from Canada, Mexico, and the United States to, to flush the TPP. The TPP, that's Obama's Trans-Pacific Partnership. That's Obama's first free trade agreement. That's NAFTA on steroids. The TPP will be the largest trade agreement since the 1995 WTO agreement. Join the historic cross-border organizing rally and summit to launch a new tri-national campaign to defeat the TPP. Get on the free bus from Portland. Contact the Oregon Fair Trade Campaign at 503 Seven three six nine seven seven seven, or email at elizabeth at organfairtrade.org. More information on the TPP is available at citizenstrade.org slash ctc slash Oregon. Or read the excellent overview of the TPP and past free trade agreements in the article on salon.com titled Trans-Pacific Partnership, the biggest trade deal you've never heard of. Read it at tinyurl.com slash TPP biggest deal. Corporations are people. Money is speech. The U.S. Supreme Court for more than the past century has ruled that corporations have constitutional rights as if they were flesh 
and blood people like you and I and since 1976 have repeatedly ruled that for political purposes money is speech. In January of 2010 they ruled that Citizens United versus the FEC that corporations can spend corporate funds directly on so-called independent campaigns and the floodgates were opened. We want our democracy back. We can take our democracy back from the plutocrats and the corporations by amending the U.S. Constitution to make clear that corporations are not people and that money is not speech. Join us now in this new democracy movement and support amending the Constitution. Learn more at movetomend.org or here in Portland, Oregon at movetomendpdx.org. And join the democracy movement with the Alliance for Democracy in Portland, afd-pdx.org, and nationally at thealliancefordemocracy.org. All right, let's get this done. Never miss an episode of Populist Dialogues again. Populist Dialogues is now on YouTube. Go to youtube.com and search for Populist Dialogues. Click on the result with the Statue of Liberty icon to view all our shows this year and to subscribe. The mission of the Alliance for Democracy is to end corporate domination, establish true democracy, create a just society based on a sustainable, equitable economy. Please learn more by visiting our national website at www.thealliancefordemocracy.org or our Portland website at afd-pdx.org. Thanks to our crew today for being here and getting us on the air. Roger Bates, Joan Horton, Janet Morris, and Tom Thomas. And thanks to you, the audience, for watching. We hope that we'll see you again next week. Bye now. <laughs>